I call the regular uh, village of Wakanda regular village board meeting to order at uh, Tuesday, August 9th, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. Would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Knight? Here. Trustee Barton? Here. Trustee Starkey? Here. Trustee Arnswald? Here. Trustee Black? Here. Trustee Howe? Here. Okay. Got a couple of fun things to do first. Uh, first one, uh, Chief Wormers, we have a couple of officers to uh, administer yes, the oath of office. We're swearing in two new Marine Unit officers. We have uh, uh, Rick Richardson and Devin Ladasic. Mm -hmm. You guys come on up. Ladasic. Sorry, Ladasic. I was sworn in as an officer once. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay, so you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. And then I and state your name. I. I, Dan Lassett. I, Rick Richardson. Having been appointed to the Office of Marine Unit Officer. Having been appointed to the Office of Marine Unit Officer. Having been appointed to the Office of Marine Officer. Great. Right. In, In the Village of Wakanda. In the Village of Wakanda. In the County of Lake. In the County of Lake. Uh, for said. For said. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. <coughs> the duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of Marine Unit Officer. Of Marine Unit Officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Great. Congratulations. Any family members want to come up for pictures? Feel welcome to do so. Stay down here for a minute. We've got a uh, little recognition to do, so it seems to be getting a, to be a habit, and it's a good habit. So I would like to invite Wendy Mills up here, please. <laughs> Wendy is with the high school with the Future Business Leaders of America, and uh, I'll let her introduce our new national champions. All right. Um, these two girls did the social media campaign. Um, Wakanda High School's FBLA is kind of what they call Future Business Leaders of America. It's kind of an academic competition, uh, and they had to get top four at state in order to go to the national level in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, well, Wakanda doesn't do anything in small versions. We have 50 kids qualified for the national level. The average chapter takes about 10. Uh, so that tells you the success we've had here. And so these girls had to go in front of everyone across the country, including Japan, China, Russia, Virgin Islands, Columbia, District of Columbia. So they had to get through a preliminary round and beat out so many teams to get into the top 12. And then they had to go again in the final round, which you had a lot of the chapter there supporting you and cheering them on. Um, I even had the state advisor there and other people there to cheer the girls on. And then the national awards was on July 2nd, where the girls have to get up on stage according to their point system that they got from the preliminary and the final round. 
and they won it being national champs and beating out all 92 teams across the country. So we're very proud of them. The nice thing about their event, I'm gonna have you guys share what it was, is their event wasn't just a fictitious event, it's an event that actually helped the community, and I'm gonna have them kind of share a little bit about what it was. So for our event, we had to create social media for a new banquet hall, and we decided at the beginning of the year that we wanted to help out a local business, and we actually helped out Westridge Banquets and Island Lake, instead of creating like a fictitious social media account for something that's not real. And we reached out to the community and asked them to follow us on Facebook, follow our Instagram page, and like us on Pinterest. And we had to create a presentation and give that and explain like all the social media aspects of why we chose, which sites we used. And I think the judges overall were just like blown away at the fact that we used a real business. And like once we said, follow us on Facebook, and like they were just in awe. It was really awesome. And really Do you have anything else to say? No, that was no. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's going to actually continue to still help the Westridge Banquets with their social media, Pinterest. Sometimes the kids know a little bit more than the adults do. So they were hoping that they would continue to help them. But that's what FLA is about, is to help the kids understand community service, give it back to your community. But I'm very proud of the girls. The judges that helped practice these kids told me they were a special group, and I knew that. I mean, I've been lucky to have Lexi Meyer the last uh, three years as a national qualifier, and Alexandra just happened to you know be just as talented as her. So it was neat to see an awesome dancer, awesome cheerleader, and awesome softball player one that's not here all get together and compete on an academic level and wind up winning. So they represented your town very well. Thank you. We want, to show, we want to show our appreciation and congratulate you as well. We do have signs oh, saying we'll be out. Awesome. Do you guys want to hold it up? Okay. <laughs> so, Ready? One, two, three. Excellent. I think one, 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 one more. One more. Oh, this is the class? Thank you. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. No, if you don't mind. <laughs> 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 yes, I want it my classroom before school starts. That's right, back to the other one. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 Okay. You are free to go if you, if you want to stay with me. She's taking the slice for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you. Oh. Consideration of consent agenda by omnibus vote. So moved. Second. Yeah. Roll call. Trustee Knight. Yes. Trustee Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Trustee Yes. Trustee Black. Yes. Yes. Not a problem. There you go. Bills for payment from July 12, 2016 through August 2nd, 2016, in the amount of $1,171,000. Nope, unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me restate that. My bank account looks like that. Okay, one million hundred and seventy one thousand one hundred and thirty four dollars and ninety eight cents. B minutes of the July fifth, twenty sixteen regular village board meeting. C minutes of the July eighteenth, twenty sixteen regular village board meeting. D approval of pay request number two in the amount of five hundred and twenty three thousand eight hundred and nine dollars and fourteen cents on the Lake Michigan Water Internal Improvement Projects, Phase 2, to Burger Excavations, Inc. E, consideration and approval of an ordinance 
amending section 119.29 of the village code adjusting the number of authorized liquor licenses. Thank you. Mayor, just as a point of information, item D on here, this pay request, $523,000 is included in that $1,100,000 on the list of bills. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Oh, I'm sorry, a motion. So move. Second. Roll call. Trustee Knight? Yes. Trustee Garbini? Yes. Trustee Starkey? Yes. Trustee Arnsvall? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Howe? Yes. And I'd just like to make a note, uh, thanking uh, Paul Wheatland. Uh, the last item on the agenda there was for his business, and thank you for choosing Wakanda. So we, uh, we look forward to his business being here in town. Uh, moving on to new business, item A is an action item. It's consideration and approval of the closure of Main Street for the following special event permits. 2016 Street Dance on September 3rd, 2016. Trick or Treat on Main Street on October 30th, 2016. Turkey Trot Race on November 24th, 2016. And the Holiday Walk on December 3rd, 2016. <coughs> I think these are all items that we're familiar with that we've done before. All very well established, very well run. <coughs> You want a motion? Is there any discussion? Just want to make sure we continue to work with some of the businesses who expressed concern in the past to um, accommodate them as much as we can for um, the issues. I know uh, Frank's always has an issue on Thanksgiving morning with the turkey trot for people picking up pies. So as long as we continue to do that, um, we're doing everything we can. I know that we're still going to have disruptions, still going to make people unhappy in, in some regards, but um, the benefit far outweighs the trouble as long as we do what we can to accommodate folks. Speaking on behalf of the Turkey Chat, we do, uh, we leave the front of their, the whole parking spaces in front of their building open for only pie pickup, and uh, we'll continue to reach out to work the best with them as we can. Cool. And then I just, the only comment that I have is that one of our strategic goals is to promote Wakanda and strengthen and maintain the relationships with the existing business community, and I think all these events really promote the village, so that's our goal, and Please help out in any way we can help out if possible. And just like last year, at the end of the year, then we'll take a look at everything, see how it worked, and we can review policies and procedures just to make sure everybody's taken care of. So. Okay, um, a motion in a second, please. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor. I'm going to abstain just because I'm involved in the party so I don't want any time. Okay. <coughs> Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Okay, thank you everyone. Moving on to uh, item B, it's an action item as well. Consideration and approval of the closure of the municipal parking lot for Blues, Brews, and Burger Fest event sponsored by the Lions Club this Saturday, August 13th, 2016 from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Very similar to what we just did, so is there any other discussions on this? Yeah, I did notice in the uh, in the memo from Administrator Max Heiner, um, that there was a requirement for a financial report. I talked, I did speak with uh, some other folks at the Lions Club last night, and in the past, it's all that this event has always been a part of the Hawaiian raffle, and the financial report is submitted when the raffle concludes. So if 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 the village believes that a separate report for this specific event is necessary. Just let the Lions Club know, and and that will be done. Okay. But the understanding on the part of the club was that it was included in the in the end of year raffle report. Okay. So I have not seen that report, but I'll take a look at it to make sure that that meets what we're looking for. Okay. Here, so. That was I just wanted to, it was mentioned to me last night. <coughs> so. okay. Any other comments? Okay. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, motion passed. Item C, another action item. Approval of change order number one in the amount of $30,300 and pay request number one in the amount of $112,770 on the elevated storage tank number one painting and repairs project contract with Ira Valdivia Contractors Incorporated. Uh, Brad? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, as you can see, the tower is progressing quite well. Um, the contractor has submitted pay request number one, which uh, we have reviewed uh, with village engineer Bill Rickard. We find it to be 
acceptable for so we're recommending its approval. Uh, they also submitted uh, change order number one for an additional thirty thousand three hundred dollars. Um, when we initially had coordination meetings with the contractors, uh, we noticed that um, through the pedestal base and um, through the, the tank itself, the dry part of the tank, uh, none of the uh, <coughs> communication or data equipment or cabling uh, was housed in it. It was all exposed. The contractor uh, had told us that that needed to be protected some way for him to, to commence any type of work. Um, so therefore, uh, we kind of put our heads together and uh, kind of came up with this solution of running a conduit uh, up through the tank. Uh, another issue that we discovered was uh, all those cables and wiring came were, came through the top hatch of the uh, tank that was cut uh, in, in, in the, the side of the hatch, uh, allowing snow and rain to actually enter the tank. And uh, I feel uh, prematurely, uh, you know, corrode the inside of the tank. So uh, this this is a fix to all this. Um, we did catch it after the project was awarded, but we felt that this work needed to be done anyway. And um, we went ahead and authorized this to be done uh, because the contractor that we have is so busy, we were worried that uh, we may lose him for this year. So we went ahead and, and, and authorized that we're bringing this forward uh, to for approval tonight. Where are we at with uh, completion on that? It looks like they're done from the outside. Is there what's left? Uh, they're very close. Do you have any? Yeah, they, sh they should be done this week, except for um, you know, getting, moving their equipment offsite, demobilizing, and then uh, there's a little bit of repair work to be done to the parking lot there. It looks great. No, no, the American right, things both look great up there, too. Thanks for doing that, having it done. So. Right, Phil. Uh, we were talking prior to the meeting up here. How long? This is, you know, when you're looking at the total project, it's almost half a million dollars. How long will this kind of paint job last if we maintain it on a regular basis through the years? Typically, how long would it last? This will last uh, at least 20, 20 to 25 years. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very high um, quality uh, industrial strength, you know, three coat uh, epoxy system. Hopefully, it'll last longer than that, than that, but it should last <coughs> at least 20 to 25 years. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board? Looks great. The Wakanda is facing the right way over the lake. <laughs> <laughs> we got two flags for the price of one, so we're all happy. Can I get a motion and a second, then, please? So move. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Knight? Yes. Trustee Garbini? Yes. Trustee Starkey? Yes. Trustee Ernstwald? Yes. Trustee Blick? Yes. Trustee Howe? Yes. Okay, item D is an action item as well. Approval of change order number three in the amount of $206,161.85 and pay request number nine, which is the final in the amount of $69,078.21 in the Lake Michigan Water Internal Improvements Project Phase One with Burger Excavating. Thank you. Um, this, this project has actually been done for quite a while, uh, but adding up all the final quantities and tabulating everything uh, in getting the final request from the contractor just came in fairly recently. Uh, what we're requesting is the final payment to Burger Contractor for uh, Phase 1, as well as uh, the final change order, change order number 3, uh, for a net deduction of $206,161.85. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, overall this project came in uh, with, with change orders 1 through 3, uh, four hundred sixty-two thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars and seventy cents uh, under the uh, contract bid amount. Uh, that's a testament to uh, not only the contractor but our uh, village engineer keeping a close eye on that, as well as uh, some value engineering of that, of that project. So um, it's, it was definitely a success. So uh, we're we're recommending approval of uh, change order number one or the final change order uh, here. Final change order number three. Um, and also the pay request, final pay request uh, number nine. Uh, Thank you, Brad. It's an awesome savings, huh? Yeah, this is over 10%. Great. Very good. Any comments, questions? Magic words. Project was finished on time and under budget. Thanks, guys. Nice <laughs> job. Okay. I'll take a motion in a second, please. So moved. Second. 
Roll call, please. Trustee Bank? Yes. Trustee Barbie? Yes. Trustee Sophie? Yes. Trustee Arnswell? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Howe? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on to E. It's an uh, action item as well. It's an approval of a proposal from RJN Group Incorporated to conduct a sewer system evaluation survey in the amount of $24,971. Right? Thank you. Uh, included in this year's budget, uh, we requested and was approved uh, some smoke testing for our sanitary sewer uh, mains throughout the village. Um, basically, this is a very economical way of, of finding inflow and infiltration into the sanitary sewer. Uh, currently, the treatment plant processes about one to one and a half million gallons a day. Uh, during during high rain events, wet weather flows, we can see up to six million gallons a day. So what we're trying to target is we're trying to uh, get rid of that stormwater out of our mm -hmm. sanitary uh, sewer system. So what this what we do um, is it's a uh, it's highly technical. Um, not a whole lot of uh, engineering firms do this, but they would pump smoke through a section of pipe, and where you see failures, leaks, uh, illegal connections, uh, you'll actually see smoke coming through the ground or up through downspout, you know, people at downspouts, uh, to identify uh, where we want to target our replacement, um, our repair, things like that. So uh, we've targeted an area which um, is included in your, uh, um, in your packet. It's uh, basically just north of the treatment plant on Silicon Lake Road, and we're uh, requesting that uh, we award that contract to RGN Group uh, to perform that smoke testing. What the products that they will, will provide us <coughs> will uh, be incorporated into our GIS, our, our, our sanitary sewer GIS, so we'll uh, be able to um, visually see where we need to uh, make the repairs necessary. This will further enhance our overall CIP project and um, and the way we uh, take care of our infrastructure moving forward. Brent, does this include Country Ridge or the older neighborhoods along Brown Street? It's Country Ridge. It's Country Ridge. It's, country Ridge. Ridge. it's, country Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. it's everything that you see there in your packet. Hubbard's work. When's yeah. the last time that this was done? Do you know? <laughs> Never? I don't. What, okay. what type of notification will the residents get? Because I would imagine we'll get some mm -hmm. phone calls if there's some smoke coming out of it. Yeah, they're, they're, they receive uh, letters in the mail, um, a mailing. They're very comprehensive in, in their notification process. Uh, emails, we can even uh, do uh, some, put something in e-news. Um, and then we're even thinking of uh, taking a look at the, uh, con what do you call it? Not connect CT line, uh, it's um, at Everbridge. For the people that, although I would think there'd be people on site looking for the smoke <coughs> anyway, they could explain it to somebody. Oh, absolutely. There's always a crew, yes, on site. But yet, you know, somebody would probably call the village hall or police first. Yeah. But the more notice we can give residents, the, mm -hmm. the more it cuts down on that immediate social media uh, uh, explosion. No one told us, and we didn't know. And you know, if we can if we can cover all those bases, it just it makes all of us, it, all of you, look better. Yes. Okay. Grant, what, um, what if they do find something in somebody's home? What do they do? How do they handle that? Well, primarily what we're looking for now are, are things that can easily be disconnected, like downspouts. Uh, um, you know, my my personal philosophy with this stuff is we address our infrastructure before we ask residents to you know disconnect theirs. Sure. Um, but you know, inexpensive things like downspouts, we would approach them and ask them to, you know, disconnect those. Um, but, uh, you know, there are, we are probably going to find some more of the expensive things like uh, driveway drains that's not so easily, you know, um, uh, fixed. Uh, also, you know, there are times people, some pumps are hooked into, um, you know, the sanitary sewer as well. So. Those are the things that we'll be looking for, and, and it, we'll at least have a record of it. We'll have a database so that once we fix our own house first, then maybe we can start to uh, um, look at some of these other, other <coughs> things that are infiltrating into the center. Will we be looking at it next year's budget of, of doing another section of town and then continuing this process until we've got everything completed in that regard? Yes. Okay. So this is 
uh, we should be expecting a similar expense for the next several years as we take care of different sections? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We've actually got $100,000 in the budget for, I believe they had listed as uh, televising sewers, but it's really evaluating uh, <coughs> sewers, sewer lines. So uh, this is a fraction of that, so 25% of that. So if we have some immediate need uh, to use those funds for repairs, we can utilize those. If not, maybe we can move on and do a different, you know, another section right away. But, Good. Uh, and then back to your initial question about, uh, <coughs> uh, about how we would proceed if we found violators at this point in the process, we're looking for compliance, not fines. So we would have a, a period of time where we could bring, uh, bring these accounts into compliance uh, before we have to uh, be a little bit more firm in our, uh, our reaction. So. It, it was done about 12 years ago. Okay. Uh, I, or as the way I put it, three mayors and two engineers ago. <laughs> and, uh, um, I, I'm sure the techniques are much more advanced mm -hmm. than the materials used, but just one recollection because of uh, the consequences. A dog died in a house that apparently there was an illegal sump connection inside and whatever smoke they were using, and again, I'm sure it's much more environmentally friendly mm -hmm. today, but uh, uh, was uh, overcome by whatever that was. Yeah. Or maybe it just had a weak heart, but uh, yeah. you may want to make sure that there's a uh, it's, it's no beast not, killing yeah, clause. It's, it's completely it. non toxic. It's yeah, totally safe. I'm sure it is. I've, I've actually like filled. Might a, be a little alarming, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I've, I've actually filled a $3 million house in Deerfield this fall. Just for fun? Or? <laughs> right. Is there a reward? <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> all the they, had, they had a laundry yeah. room upstairs, and it didn't have a trap, and it just came through and filled the whole house. So that was a little alarming. But it, 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 was, it was all dissipated within. You know, probably 10 minutes did not leave a smell, <coughs> didn't permeate material, drapes, you know, the carpeting. It, it just smoke detectors didn't go off. No, no, yeah. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on, on that subject, is it, is, is, it, is it advisable or possible to get within our contract with them some sort of an indemnification mm -hmm. or something else for the village in case something, you know, in, in case something happened that wasn't necessarily the fault of this, but someone mm -hmm. thinks it might be, um, and brings an action that we can get some coverage from. <coughs> Rudy, is that something that it's always advisable to get an indemnification? If they think that uh, if they think it's harmless and they're confident in that, they should have a problem giving it to us. Sure. Great. Is RJM one of the few out there, or are there a couple? They're they're basically the industry standard. Um, uh, do you know yeah, they, they, they specialize in doing these types of studies, so they're one of the uh, one of the top firms in that particular field. Good. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, I'll take a motion in a second, please. <laughs> so moved. Second. Roll call. Trustee Knight? Yes. Trustee Barbie? Yes. Trustee Starkey? Yes. Trustee Arnsworth? Yes. Trustee Black? Yes. Trustee Howe? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. For the mayor's report, uh, I just want to thank uh, Chief Formas for uh, sending uh, two of our sergeants down to Baton Rouge for the tragedy down there. So we uh, do appreciate it and uh, all that you and your officers do over there. So, um, And hope to see everybody this Saturday at uh, Blues, Brews, and Burgers. So. With that, uh, we'll do trustee comments. Uh, trustee Barbine. I'd like to uh, compliment the staff and the marketing committee. Uh, this was a great job that they did with the uh, North and West Quarterly and the articles that appeared in here. Uh, uh, kudos. Uh, this kind of promotion of the village goes, goes a long way. You find these things in doctor's offices. You find them all over. So it, uh, it really helps. And, you know, hopefully we can look at other means of uh, promoting other initiatives we have going on here. I know the committee will be talking about things uh, as we move forward. Uh, the next development committee meeting, I talked with Chris Miller uh, yesterday, will be this coming Monday, not Tuesday, Monday, August 15th, if I'm not mistaken, and it will, yep, it will be at 5.30 p.m. right here. <coughs> That's it. Great, thank you. Trustee Starkey. The Natural Resources Committee will meet on Monday as well, the 15th at 7 p.m. Agenda will go out on Friday. 
Um, and on that, that same uh, message, I want to <coughs> congratulate the Marine officers. Uh, I've heard nothing but positive things from residents about the Marine officers, what they've done out there, you know, enforcement, but also just talking to people on the lake. So they, they've done a really great job this year, and I haven't heard anything. That's unusual, so that's good. <laughs> and then just a reminder, uh, the reason we're meeting on Monday is because the third cruise night of the season is next Tuesday. So we're looking for forward to great weather and a lot of cars, and we'll see you guys all up. That's all. Thank you. Trustee Arnsmouth. Um Real quick, uh, no committee report, but just a uh, big congratulations to the three girls, Alexis Taylor and Alexandra. And... Also, congratulations to Rick and Devin welcoming in and just echoing what Linda said out there. That's all I've heard is good things from the main unit. So keep up the good work. That's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Black. Uh, ditto. Just uh, congratulations to the FBLA group and then also Chief. Um, I've heard the same thing, nothing but good things about your team. So Thank you, good job, keep up the good work. And then, uh, as Trustee Starkey said, third cruise night, next Tuesday, come on out, hopefully we'll get some good weather, and we'll have a good show. Awesome. Trustee Howe. Uh, I want to also welcome uh, uh, Officers Richardson and uh, Letisek. Um, uh, great to have a, a full staff out there. These guys are, uh, can't, uh, I can't do any more than what my fellow trustees have already said. Interactions have been a great. We had an opportunity um, to uh, call the Marine Unit. Um, a week or so ago, we were at uh, okay. Lindy's, and we had a, a boat leaking fuel, and Trustee Starkey made the call. Somebody was over there in five minutes and immediately used the registration information on file to reach out and contact the owner, who happened to be there at Lindy's, but we got a hold of him on the phone and had him paged. He came out, didn't know his boat was leaking fuel, so we immediately got in and got him in and got it out of the water. So. Uh, created, uh, <coughs> prevented any further environmental damage. Um, I want to welcome uh, Paul Wheatland over at uh, Main Street Outfitters. Already a great business, going to be even better, hard to imagine, uh, but uh, but it's exciting. And License and Admin Committee, August 30th, we're going to talk turkey about chickens. Um, <laughs> so it should be based on what I've seen on Facebook, it should be a lively conversation. <laughs> um, so um, if anybody has a uh, has anything to add on that subject? Uh, look forward to hearing from you uh, at that point. And that's it. All right. Well, thank you. That was very entertaining <laughs> and informative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take a motion to go into uh, executive session for uh, uh, 5 ILCS 122C2 for collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or representatives, and 5 ILCS 122C5 for purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Will, will there be action on that? There will be action on items discussed in executive session upon returning. <laughs>